In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the LPK25 with your MPC software so that you can use the arpeggiator. Check it out. What's up everybody, welcome to the video. On this channel, I do tutorials, setup videos, music videos, just like this one. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, so there's a little bit of discussion about what the MPC can and cannot do, and it does not have a dedicated arpeggiator. Yes, there are workarounds. For example, you can load hybrid or other different plugins into the software and get an arpeggiator that way, but it's not built into the software or even the hardware for that matter. So since there is no dedicated function with the MPC Live, Akai does have products that do offer arpeggiator. For example, most of their keyboards have arpeggiators built into it. I have the LPK25 right here and it has an arpeggiator built into it. And I know the MPK has one and I know um, the Akai Advance has a arpeggiator built into it as well. So you can use this to your advantage, right? The LPK25 is around 50, 55 US dollars. Fairly inexpensive to get this feature and you get a dedicated keyboard to your MPC. All right, so if you take your attention to the software, uh, the only way to do this with the LPK25 is to do it in the software because there is no MIDI sync options and standalone. So if you go to your preferences, go to MIDI, you make sure that right here in the inputs, you have your LPK25 set up there. And if you're using a different keyboard, make sure it's set up there, it should work the same. If you come down here to sync, all right, you wanna send your MIDI clock. You wanna make sure your receive's turned off. You wanna send your MIDI clock and you want to send it to your LPK25 wireless. So that's the software aspect of it. So if you take your attention to my keyboard, I wanna show you a few things. All right, so you need to have your USB cable connected here. You can see I have a USB cable connected here. That's going straight into my computer. All right, the USB cable gives it power and it also gives it MIDI sync. So on the software side of things, I have everything set up. So now I need to set it up on the keyboard. So before I do anything, I need to make sure the arpeggiator is on. You can see right here, I got tap tempo so I could set the tempo manually there, but I wanna sync it, right? So I'm gonna push this button here. You can see this is the arpeggiator section. I wanna click that button and I wanna click this key right here. You can see it says external sync. And once I do that, you can see that this right here, the tap tempo was blinking, now it's solid. So that means we're set up, we're good to go. Now you can hear when I play the keyboard, it gives me that option to play it Okay, but if I turn this on, I can't play it because it's synced. It's synced to the arpeggiator. All right, so the arpeggiator is at a standstill right now. So what I'm gonna do, so if, if I click play, it clicks it on, okay? So there, there you go. Now I know I'm in sync. So I wanna explain a few things to you. Okay, so I'm gonna use this video as the setup and explanation video, and then I'm gonna give you like real examples of how this could, could actually work for you in other videos. Basically, if you push this on off button here and then click the key, it gives you the function of whatever it says on top. You can see right here, it says four, um, excuse me, it says one fourth to one thirty second T. So I got quarters, quarter T's. Okay, and T stands for triplet. All right, so you heard that it was kind of fast. If I play it now, it should be slow, right? Because it's in quarter notes. And if you look at the software right there, C3 is playing. I could change the note, all right? Right there. C2. Back to C3. All right, so that's your divisions, okay? So I can change the divisions. Let me just give you an example. Triplets. Eighths. All right, sixteenths. Sixteenths T. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds T. 
So that's the fastest subdivision that we have, right? All right, so pretty cool. That takes care of that section right there. All right, so then there's like this second section. It kind of goes from up, down, exclude, include, order, random, and latch. Okay, and then there's this section here. All right, and then there's this section here. This is how I separate it in my head. And um, so basically that was just one note arpeggiating, but you can play multiple notes, right? So that's where this section comes into place. So if I push up, so I'm gonna hold this down, push up. So that means the arpeggiator is going to go in order from the lowest note to the highest note. All right, so I'll give you an example. So if I play this note and then this note, well, let me push play first. Boom, right there, you can hear it. All right, so it goes from low to high. Now it's kind of, it, I guess it's kind of hard. Let me do uh, four notes. All right, so now you could really hear it go to the top. And then that's up. If I push down, it's just gonna reverse the order. All right? You can hear it, it's very easy to hear. All right, and if I push exclusive, which is what it's on now, it's not gonna play the top note, okay? But if I push inclusive, it's gonna play the top note again before coming back down and then play the bottom note twice before going back up. So check it out. Let me um, turn our page back on and I'll play four keys again. Push inclusive. See how it plays it twice? All right, so that's inclusive. So then I can have the option to play in the order I press the keys. So thus far, whatever keys I press, it doesn't matter which order, it's gonna play them either up or down, okay? And that's according to note value or pitch. Then in this area, it's gonna play in order of when I press the key. I wanna push the on off key, I wanna push order. All right, so that's going to be in order where, where I press the keys. So that's easy to understand, right? It's just the order I press the keys. It's pretty cool. You can make interesting melodies or whatever you want that way. And then this button here is the random. So check it out. So it's in order, I press the keys now. If I click random, it's just gonna be random notes. You can see how it's randomized. So say I was like coming short of ideas, I could hit random on here and perhaps come up with a cool melody or a cool little, you know, little jive. Or, you know, I could speed it up. You know, that sounds pretty groovy, right? <laughs> All right, it's pretty cool, right? So if you go over here, you got latch. It's already on latch. Basically, that means when I pull my fingers off the keys, it's going to keep playing. If I don't have latch on, as soon as I pull my fingers off of the keys, it's going to stop playing. That's straightforward. I don't really need to demonstrate that. But you can see here, you got arpeggiator, octave one, octave two, octave three, octave four, and we already went over external sync, okay? So that's just how many octaves the arpeggiator is going to play. So let me kind of uh, erase that arpeggiation, push play on there. All right, so now we have, let me slow it down a bit. All right, so we have one octave now. If I go to octave two, still have it on random. Let me go in up. 
All right, got two octaves. If I want three, you can get three. Four, four. Now this also works with multiple notes, right? Check it out. There you go, man. It's pretty cool. Back to one octave. All right, so now you got an idea of what all this stuff does on top here. All right, this right here is just the different programs. You could set up like different options and then save it on different programs for recall later, and, you know, using this key right here. But that doesn't have to do with the actual function of the arpeggiator. So pretty much, uh, so that's pretty much it, right? So check it. It's four notes, two octaves, inclusive. You know, I can do down. Speed up the, the notes, you know what I mean? Triple it. You know, go random if I want. Okay, I hope this makes sense to you. So basically what I'm doing in this video is just showing you how the arpeggiator works. What I want to do is another video kind of showing how it works actually in the software because you can actually record the arpeggiator in the software. So if you're interested in how to do this and record it in the software, go ahead and you know subscribe or whatever and check out the next video. All right, and if you found value in this video, please just push the like button. It really helps the channel out. It helps spread this information and you know, it helps people create some music, man. That's what this channel is about. Just getting in there, sharing ideas, creating music, you know, there's room for all of us to get creative here, here and there. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. My name is Matthew. Continue to create music and I'll see you in the next video.